Hi there, Dennis Gebhardt here with Guru Nation. Uh, let me ask you a question. Do you ever get confused when you hear one educator give you content that's supposed to be factual and you hear another educator give you content which actually contradicts that information? Does it happen to you? Yeah, it happens to me all the time. Um, my wife says I need to stay off social media because it's uh, there's a plethora of confusing information out there. Uh, today, what I wanna do is spend just a few minutes with you talking about something we talk about all the time. It's like rehashed, rehashed, and rehashed. And uh, maybe I can give you some clarity on what the actual facts are about the information. As you all know, uh, on social media, we get lots of people doing reels and giving information. And I think they do it casually. Sometimes they do it without thinking about it, whether or not it makes sense. Uh, but today I wanna share something that comes from some people that are really pretty uh, involved. Um, as I say, sometimes even those people with the blue checks on their name uh, get it wrong. And so this post was about gray hair. And what I'm gonna do is share with you the actual post so that you can see exactly what this person wrote. One of the things that uh, the way they headed their, um, their post was why I stopped using 20 volume for gray coverage. Hear me out before you say, yeah, but. Okay, so I'm willing to hear this person out. Um, before we move forward, just something for you to keep in mind, 20 volume is the standard in our industry. It uh, gives you adequate amount of oxidation and allows a good maximum dye development binding of the dye. So it's really the standard in our industry, but obviously this person here decided that they weren't gonna use 20 volume any longer. So here is the rationale. Says we are taught in school that 20 volume or 6% is necessary for great coverage. And I'm here to tell you why in most cases it's overkill. So if this person believes that 20 volume is gonna to be too much oxygen to give you what you're looking for. Our color tubes contain alkalizing agents. They do, called ammonium hydroxide. It's called MEA, monolethanolamine. It's called amino methylpropanol. It's an alchemy. So they all do, if in permanent hair color and even in demi-permanent, but they all can contain some sort of an alchemy because hair color in its natural form, in its raw form before it's mixed with peroxide is alkaline. That's what actually swells the cuticle. So that allows the dye molecules to be delivered into the cortex. That is true. Uh, the alkalinity and the color does swell the cuticle layer and swelling the cuticle layers separates the, the cuticle imbrications and exposes the uh, cell membrane complex, which is the pathway between the cuticle layers. So that the dye intermediates, which are small colorless dye molecules can find their way to the cortex or what we call the matrix of the hair. They bind together, they attach to the structure of the hair. And as a result of that, that is where a hair color molecule is created. So yes, the alkalinity swells it, but peroxide plays a huge role in the oxidation process. Peroxide is the energy needed to create lift or deposit. Actually, peroxide is just oxygen. That's all that it is. And um, the only way you're gonna get lift or oxygen or deposit is based upon what's in the color. In other words, if it's a dark shade of color and you mix it with peroxide, you'll probably get a lot of deposit. If it's a light shade of color and you mix it with the same peroxide, you won't get as much deposit, not because of the peroxide, but because of the dye intermediates that are in each individual tube of hair color. That's the way hair color works. So when I read this post, uh, I see that they're creating too much of a separation between what peroxide does and what alkalinity does, okay? Because remember that's determined 
by the tube of hair color, by the color you mix it with. Here's a good rule of thumb. You might want to make a note of this. The alkaline portion of a color process determines, number one, how long peroxide will release oxygen and how much oxygen it will release. So, so when I mix color with peroxide, peroxide begins to break down. It manifests itself by the release of oxygen. That's what we call oxidation. And the, based on the alkalinity and the color, it will determine number one, how long the peroxide will be, be able to release oxygen. The percentage or volume of developer will determine how much available oxygen it has to release. So here's an example. Let's say my client is a level six and needs great coverage. If I use 20 volume, I'm creating lift and exposing underlying pigment that will eventually rear its ugly head, or it does automatically by creating a hot root. So if their client is a level six and they need great coverage, the amount of exposed pigment from that hair, if you're using a 20 volume, is negligible. Is there some warrant that it might be exposed? Yes, but I assume from this post that they're using a level six on a level six. So there won't really be any exposed warrant. Is it possible that the pigmented hair could expose warmth if she's a level six? A six on a six, they're not going to have much there. Is there possible as color fades, there might be some warmth exposed? Some, but really minimal. The only reason you would get a hot root, that's what we, and the roots are underneath the skin, by the way. They are not at the scalp area. The only reason you would get a hot root is if your application was improper, if you applied scalp to end instead of applying away from the scalp, especially if it's a virgin out of hair. Other than that, you're not going to get a hot root unless there's another variable included. If I switch to 10 or 15 volume, I reduce the lift and get full deposit, which equals truer tone. That's not true. You don't get any more deposit with 10 or 15 volume. What you do, what does happen is you may disturb less pigment in the hair. So you may seem to look, get a better deposit result, but they also have oxygen. And there's less oxygen in the 10 volume or in 15 volume than there is in 20 volume. And one of the biggest problems with covering gray hair is that you don't have adequate amount of oxygen release to develop all the dyes to maximum dye development. So this person believes if I switch to 10 or 15 volume, I reduce lift and get full deposit, which equals truer tone not necessarily true at all. And better coverage because we are avoiding an unnecessary lift cycle. Here's the thing to remember. If you have gray hair that is resistant, it has more cuticle layers than the average head of hair. Average head of hair has seven to 10 layers. Gray hair can have up to 16 or 17 layers of hair, hair of cuticle. And so if I try to use a lower volume or lower percentage of developer, I may not have enough available oxygen in order to develop, to continue that oxidation process until all the dye intermediates travel and embed themselves in the cortex of the hair. Therefore, I get partially developed hair color or under-processed hair color. And as a result of that, I get early fading. When we ask about lift and deposit cycle, this is still something that is hanging out in our industry. Uh, but before we do that, let's talk a little bit about peroxide um, one more time. Volume is a percentage, is an indicator of available oxygen for release. That's why in laboratories, we test with 20 volume, because we know 20 volume gives you adequate release of oxygen to allow you to get not only the amount of lightning you're trying to create if it's necessary, but also 
a maximum dye development. The whole key and successful hair color is maximizing your dye development so that the color binds with the hair and it has longevity. The reason most hair color, if your color is fading prematurely, it has nothing to do with the volume of developer. Well, if you're using 20, it would not have anything to do with that. It would, the reason it would fade prematurely is because you didn't have enough oxygen to develop all the dye intermediates. As a result, you have partially developed dyes that are still in and around the cuticle layer. And that's why clients have early fading. Without adequate oxygen supply, you will not achieve maximum dye development, therefore creating early fading. I just repeated myself, <laughs> so sorry. All right, let's talk about lift and deposit. This person seems to believe that lifts and deposit, as an industry, we seem to believe that lift and deposit occur at different times, and that's not true. They actually occur simultaneously. At the same time I am lifting, that's what we call it, lifting, which is actually breaking down the structure of the hair, I'm also carrying in intermediate dye, inter, dye intermediates into the hair strand. That's all happening at the same time. Uh, in hair color, there is no lift and deposit cycle that are divide, def definitely separated. In hair color, they occur simultaneously. Now, naturally, there's going to be more breaking down in the initial part of the process, and there's going to be some uh, uh, dye development still occurring at the finish of the process. But we must understand that we get dye development throughout the whole process. You can test this yourself. Take um, any swatch of hair you've got and mix it with the level, uh, mix your color level six with 20 oil, put it on one swatch, process it for only 10 minutes, take it off. Put it on another swatch, process it for 20 minutes, take it off. Another swatch for 30, another swatch for 45. What you're going to find is that you got deposited all of those different increments of time. Now, at first 10 minutes of dye development is going to probably not be as deep or as uh, sometimes we call it overtoning when we do it with a toner. It's not going to be as deep or as rich looking because all the dyes have not developed because you under process the color. So maximizing your dye development leaves, means leaving the product on until the completely end of the service. So let me review. Number one, gray hair will cover successfully with 20 volume. The only reason you're gonna get a hot scalp area or hot root, that's what they call it in hairdresser lingo, is because of an improper application or um, uh, that would be the only reason that that would happen. Um, if you switch to 10 or 15 volume, you can do that, but realize that you do not have the same amount of oxygen release in those two volumes of developer. And so you may not get, uh, you may get what you read as complete coverage, but the longevity of the color may not, may not last because you haven't developed all of the dyes. Very, very important. Remember that the amount of oxygen released is determined, uh, number one, the amount of oxygen released is determined by what you have in the bottle. How long you get to release that oxygen is determined by the alkalinity and the hair color. Uh, remember, there's no lift and deposit cycle in a hair color process. They all happen simultaneously. And um, peroxide doesn't know whether it's lifting or depositing. It just does what it does. It breaks down. That's basically what it's happening. So um, we try to put brains, we try to make people think that these products know what they're supposed to do. They do not. They are simply a chemical. The person that knows what they're doing is you. That's why we need to make sure that we do our due diligence and make sure we're grounded in hair color process. Uh, one of the biggest flaws we have in our industry is when a color goes sideways, we end up blaming it not on ourselves for mechanic issues, we blame it on the product. So hopefully today has given you some clarity. For those of you that have been asking uh, about education that we offer at Guru Nation, I want to let you know that we have summer school coming up starting June the 5th. It's already up on our website. And uh, you can sign up for that. It is 30 days of immersion into the world of hair color. 
hair science, hair color chemistry, uh, physics, hair color theory, uh, formulation, color mapping, pigment weight, all of these things that will help you be even more successful than you already are in the salon. We have three amazing coaches. Well, we have three, two amazing coaches that I had an opportunity to work with. And uh, this way you are always in contact with us for the 30 days. We have a private messaging service. So you can call us anytime, 24 seven. And uh, we're right there. We're in your ear, if you will. So uh, check us out. If you're interested in coming to Hair Color School, we would love to have you come and play in our sandbox. Also, for those people who have been asking about my book, we will start taking pre-orders for the book April 1st. So we're very excited. They are now in the process of for page formatting. Uh, everything else is already completed. So I am looking forward to uh, having that book uh, uh, in my hands here pretty, pretty soon. In any case, uh, you can check it out. Look on our website for it. And uh, you can pre-register for a advanced copy if you would like. Also this year, we're gonna be doing some traveling. Uh, some of it has been put off until spring or summer. We're now in spring. So be watching for some upcoming dates. I'm gonna to be touring here in the West with, uh, I'm gonna opportunity to work with Rebecca Taylor. For those of you who know who she is, I'll be working with Rebecca Taylor, uh, another art, great artist, Juan Carlos out of Las Vegas, Nevada, and Nick Flyer, who is an amazing hair designer. Um, we'll be doing six programs uh, all over the western part of the U.S. So uh, for those of you that are here in the 13 western states, keep your eyes open for that promotion. And remember to follow us if you uh, like what we share with you. Uh, please stay in touch with us. You can come to our website, which is gurunation.net. Uh, for those people who... Um, or on Instagram and they have a problem logging on to our website, to our educational page, all you have to do is go to my bio in Instagram, click on the link tree link, and it will take you directly to our educational catalog. It will show you programs that we offer. Not only do we have downloadable videos, but we also have virtual classrooms uh, that we've actually done classes before and you can actually purchase that class. So if you didn't get to make it to that class, uh, you can purchase it and you can watch it at your convenience. Um, you follow me on Instagram if you would like to. Instagram, my logo, my my page is at Real Captain Color. You can find my teaching partner, Max Massiano, at Max M Hair. Uh, Yvette Frontani, who is one of our coaches in hair color school, you can find her at Yvette underscore Frontani. And uh, out here on the West Coast, a great color artist, Erica Blancet. You can find her at Erica Blancet. Also uh, on YouTube, those of you that are watching this video on YouTube, we appreciate you uh, subscribing and staying with us. We're going to be start to do more live programs on YouTube. Uh, and in some of the forums on Facebook. So be watching for that. We're very excited about what the upcoming things bring for us. And that's the end of this piece. Hopefully you found it beneficial. Uh, hopefully you walked away with a little bit of clarity. Please be sure to drop us a line. Let me know uh, the feedback on you know, how this information goes over for you. If it's something that you can use. Uh, if you find it valuable, share it with your friends. And uh, as I say always, until I see you again, from my heart to yours, I'm Captain Color. I'm out. You have an amazing week. Bye-bye now.